for me, I, I was just always so confused as a child and still as an adult, but mostly more as a child. I was uh-huh. always so confused. Cause uh, being, confused about what? Confused about being African being and being Muslim. Yeah. And being just generally black wow. in America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those three things used to confuse me so much. Because yeah. I didn't, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Like yeah. I thought it had to be like one or the other. I didn't know like all that could be like all three, if that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah, I no, am totally, all three. Totally, yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, How do you deal with that? Asma? Yes. You say you say Asma. T- Asma. Am I closer? I mean you got it right. Yeah, Asma. Okay. So it's Ara- Ara- Arabic? Yes. Like Arabic. Arabic um my and it means anything I'm I'm like I I feel like I know enough about you now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it means anything anything good. In your eyes, yeah. Much, right? In my eyes, not just my eyes. Well, I mean, the way you interpret the the definition, because it sounds like it, there's a lot of different variations to it, you know. Uh huh. So the way you take it in, it's it's um, anything good. Yes. It's eminent. Yes, name of my brand. <laughs> yeah. So, so. How is that that how that obviously that's where you got the name from when did you start getting that brand like popping and stuff like when you when did you come up with the idea of doing that um of doing my brand yeah uh, I came up with that idea in 2016 I think late two, oh no yeah late 2016 uh-huh. like, um I just figured that I finally wanted to put out a brand um, and you design everything in it? Yeah, I design everything in it myself. Do all the fabric picking. Uh-huh. Everything from A to Z. Except yeah. for actually sewing it. Like, I have pattern makers and stuff uh-huh. that I hire for that. Um, uh-huh. But, yeah. That's, that's, your, that's your thing? What? Your... Your your brand, so that's it's basically like your baby. It's like you. Yeah, it is. You, you you have a hand in pretty much everything into going into it. Yeah, it's still learning to walk though uh, <laughs> on its own. So it's like it's still in its infancy stage. Would you say or would you yeah? Think it's um, right now it's um I actually deactivated it the other really? day. Yeah. Why'd you do that? Um, cause right now, I don't know, I've been going through a lot of life changes right now. If that, really? Yeah. Um, I'm just reevaluating a lot of things. You, you are so good at like being calm. <laughs> like really, like you don't, like you don't seem like there's anything wrong. <laughs> You're not the first person to tell me <laughs> that, honestly. How do you? How did you get there? Like, how did? I mean, obviously, I don't know if you got it captured on in this take or whatever. But mm-hmm. you're like into a lot of like calming, calming like mechanisms. So you know, you're into like yoga, stretching. Mm-hmm. Um, you're into yellow <laughs> <laughs> and, and purple, like, but not like the plush purple, like the the royalty type. It's like a like a soft, like a mop, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it? It sounds like you have like a a pretty good understanding of self, you know, where you have like a lot going on in your head, but you you know you need some kind of calming mechanism, and you kind of grab onto them. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> You're good at reading people. <laughs> ah, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's just interesting because you're just like uh, you, you know, you you know what you know what I was thinking about like mm-hmm. because I was like creeping on your page, right? Oh, okay. 
and um, and we'll talk about you know your whole your modeling in, in a minute. But like, like your face always looks like it's smiling. Like you have a resting, smiling face. You think so? Yeah, it's like it's just very pleasant. It's like oh, they, when I, like I want to see you angry. Not not really. I don't want to see it. But like I like I can't imagine you like this like upset. Because even like when you, I bet you when you sleep, you're smiling still. You know? <laughs> uh, I, that's funny because I don't know. I guess around my family, yeah. I usually show I show more emotion. Okay. Well, mostly around my siblings. Like yeah, yeah. since I'm so used to them, I usually give them more of my. You give them more shit. Like you give, yeah. you give them more shades of yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um it just really depends on who the person is or Yeah. Yeah. I guess I've just learned to be learn when and how to be a certain I don't know, like this is a, this a is certain learned. self around yeah. different people, I guess. Um, but I usually do keep myself pretty content and at yeah. peace. So you're like so this is learned behavior. Yeah. Is there any time in your life where you were just like obnoxious and just like, um, yo, you need to in calm high down. school when I was um, growing out of my shell? Because really, I grew up just like I said. Apart from being around my family, I'm usually I'm really quiet and yeah. shy and withdrawn. Um, yeah. So I guess that's where it all comes from. Because. That's how I was in, that's how I was growing up, like in school and everything. Uh -huh, like uh -huh. when I'm out in public, that's how I am too. Yeah. So that's where my nervousness and anxiety comes <laughs> from, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I just keep it together. I don't say much. Yeah, I yeah. just let everything run through my head. Yeah, yeah. Um, nah, I, I definitely feel you because, I mean, I, I essentially do the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's like... Um, what are we so afraid of? Like, why, why, um, I don't know what happens where, like, cause we, we I'm sure we definitely have opinions on everything that happens. Mm -hmm. But what is a trigger that's like, nah, don't say that, you know? Like, you think it's fear or do you, do you think it's like, um, um, I, I think some people kind of see it as like, just being kind of like um what's the word like uptight or just like um oh yeah i think that's how some people perceive it as some people when they see me like just being keeping cool and calm yeah. like they take that as me being uptight because i'm yeah, not yeah. like falling apart or anything yeah, yeah. but usually a lot of things that people freak out about really aren't a big deal yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me i just brush a lot of things off only like certain things get to me yeah but a lot of things really don't bother me so i keep cool um you I, figured out what what matters to you yeah that's 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 like that's like a, such a huge quality to have um like, I, cause I think about it all the time too. I'm just like, does this even matter right now? <laughs> exactly. Like what's going on? Yeah. What, so what, how can you count the things that matter on one hand? Yeah, yeah. I can. <laughs> what are the things that matter to you? Um, if you don't mind me asking. Loyalty, respect, and what else matters to me? <laughs> Communication. Oh, yeah, Communication that's a big a one. Thing. Communication. Like, if you don't have any of those three things to me, those are the things that, like, upset me, especially if really? I feel like we're close. And what I'm kind like, of communication, though? Like, like uh, just always, like, being open with me, sharing with me, like, as uh -huh. much as I share with you. And I, I, I guess I can get that. Some people don't want to share everything about themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm that way, too. But if I feel like I'm giving that to you, then, you, you and should. we're supposedly close, then yeah. I should receive that from you, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you sound like you speak from experience. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> like, so many people I've gone through these things with, and I'm just, especially like, was it last year? No, 2016. I just feel like a lot of people I had in my life at that point, it was just, 
it took a while for me to realize I wasn't getting any of that from a lot of people. You were you're putting more into it than they were. Yeah, whether it be like friendships or not as much relationships. It's like mostly just friendships, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you cherish yeah. friend, friendships a lot. Then. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I don't yeah. have much friends. <laughs> yeah, you have a small circle, but those extremely small. Yeah. Wow, I feel like I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> Um, no, that's cool. So where'd you go to, what, what's your longest friendship? My longest friendship. What does that look like? Um, right now, um, I met this Jamaican girl. Her name is Yannick. Yannick. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Yannick? Oh, actually, it's funny. Yeah. I'm going to take it back a little. Wow. So growing up in New Jersey, um, I guess in the 10th grade, I met this Jamaican girl named Yannick. Yeah. Um, she just moved. She's she was fresh from Jamaica, pretty much. She um, had a thick accent. Her accent wasn't that thick, actually. Really? Yeah, but I'm trying to like. I don't think it was her accent. Imagine Yannick right now. Yeah, for me, I feel like her attitude was like Rihanna's. Like I don't know, she yeah. embodied Rihanna's attitude, really? but she was also like super sweet girl at the same time. You know. Yeah. I feel like she was like. You trying to say Rihanna's not sweet? No, she, no. I mean, no. Like she's like both. She is that like. Yeah. yeah. Just edgy but sweet. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like don't you don't want to be on the wrong side of Exactly, her. yeah, yeah. So that's how I feel like she was. I yeah. feel like she was probably like the first and baddest bitch I ever met, yeah. if that makes sense. <laughs> no, it makes perfect sense. We all need a bad bitch in our lives. Just to <laughs> we like do. keep things in order for us. You know? Yeah. It's <laughs> funny because I was thinking about this last week. Yeah. Anyway, so of what, um, of what about Yannick or like yeah. how you guys met? Yeah, so I met her in school. So this is, okay, there's two Yannicks in my life. Uh huh. Okay, she's the first Yannick I met. She's Jamaican. There's two, you met two Yannicks. Yeah, that's the funny thing. And I'm trying to get <laughs> to not, it. That's uh, like a, a unique, like Yannick is a unique thing. Exactly. <laughs> Is so it? yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, go for it. I met the first Yannick in New Jersey. Um, I think I, yeah, I knew her for about two years, and then she had got she moved or something or switched high schools or something. Yeah. And then so I moved out here my senior year of high school. Yeah. And I met another Yannick from Jamaica. She just also moved from Jamaica. What is what's up with you and Yannick? Son? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's funny because I missed the first Yannick a lot. Yeah. And then I just feel like God decided to send me another one, which yeah. is so funny. And I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I don't know what to think of it. Yeah. yeah. But it's it like, doesn't it's not like on accident. Like you stuff like that happens and you're like, this is not on accident. Exactly, know? yeah. And it's funny because I was hanging out with the Yannick, my Cali Yannick. Yeah. <laughs> I was hanging out with her like a couple of days ago and I told her all of this. So yeah, that's yeah. funny. She, you're just, you just told her like recently? Yeah. No, I, I told her when I first met her about the other Yannick, yeah. but um, everything that I'm saying now, like how. Um, oh, about the whole like process of getting to. to yeah. I just, yeah, I told her about that. So how did, how did Yannick number two take it? Yeah, she took it the same way. Like, oh, like she's, <laughs> she's like, well, yeah, you definitely need people like me in your life. Yeah, so yeah. obviously, she, the, and they have similar personalities. Silly, yeah. Um, oh, wow. So she's so yeah. So she's like the longest friend I've had out here. So about yeah. nine years now, I've known her. So you moved from New Jersey mm -hmm. out here to out here. Yeah. How long were you living in New Jersey? I lived in New Jersey all my life. I grew up there. Uh -huh. But I was born in Virginia. Man, so when did you move from Virginia to New Jersey? Um, I don't know. I was a, I was a baby, like so a, like so a, not. I don't even think not even a year, because yeah. this is what happened when I was yeah. born. Not yeah. too long after that, uh, my parents sent me and my siblings to um, Sierra Leone in West Africa. Okay, yeah, yeah. So basically, that's what uh, usually ethnic parents do. They send their child back, back? home. Really, I, yeah. I always got threatened with that because oh, yeah, my, where you from? <laughs> my parents are Nigerian. What? You're Nigerian? I'm Nigerian. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What? It was always like uh, <laughs> that was that was like the threat. Like you, you, I'm gonna send you. So you actually had the, uh, you actually got like the threat. Like I mean, it was at that time. It wasn't really like a threat. They just wanted us to grow up in our culture and yeah, learn yeah, our yeah, language. Learn yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what it was. Yeah. So, so you stay. How long were you in Sierra Leone? 
we didn't stay too long maybe like less than a year because that was like in 90 no 95 uh-huh. yeah actually so yeah probably about a year we were there so in 95 was when um the civil war or whatever broke oh, out yeah, the yeah. war over diamonds war over multiple yeah, reasons yeah, yeah. out there yeah, so yeah. we got sent back the u.s embassy requested us first to come back really so yeah. the u.s was looking out yeah they, they were they were yeah, so yeah. that's pretty at awesome. least at least you know there's one instance yeah for that. <laughs> exactly yeah. i can't believe you're nigerian yeah. oh my is gosh. that like is that, it got you flustered a little bit yes because i love meeting africans and i had no idea really dude. usually people don't because i don't look it i guess you don't, but I can see it now. Now, now it's all like, oh, Your yeah. Your face is coming into shape. Like, wow. I'm yeah. trying to get a better look at you than it's there. <laughs> like, the lights are kind of like... I can't like, believe you're Nigerian. So, yeah. damn, what's your name? Daniel, last name David. Daniel David. You don't My have, middle like... Name, ah, see, you, see, you got to look at the middle name to, like, get, like, the... Uh, yeah, what's your middle name? I get very self-conscious about saying it because I don't think I say it right. Um, it's Upong. Upong. Uh, U-K-P-O-N-G. U-K. Upong. I'm a junior. So, um, yeah, my, my parents, my dad is from Eket, like down south, and my mm-hmm. mom is, uh, she's Nupe. Yeah, I mean, she's... Um, house of I me. Mean. Oh, okay. But, um, but yeah. That's so dope. Do you know how to speak your language at no. all? No, no. You know, it, it's <laughs> weird. Um, and I'm reflecting on this the other day too. Just, um, as a first generation kid, mm-hmm. um, whose parents were not legally they weren't citizens you mm-hmm. know so they were like going through expired visas you know what i'm saying yeah. like kind of there's a point in time where they had to like hide you know and my mom she just got her citizenship last oh, wow. year wow. my dad is getting his this year wow um so like growing up like they kind of had i knew i was definitely something different you know like mm-hmm. i knew like oh this is my parents are speaking something totally different <laughs> right now than mm-hmm. English. Um, I didn't know they had like an accent until like sixth grade, though. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and they came from two different places in Nigeria too. So like, my mom's from up north, my dad's from down south, and they have different languages, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, in Nigeria, you know, like the, I guess the most common language is Yoruba, right? Like. Yeah. So. They both speak Yoruba and then they speak their, you know, their town language. But they never taught me that. Just I think out of, out of fear, you know, uh-huh. just out of fear of like um, deportation in a way. Yeah. Because they didn't want to make it seem like they were raising their kid to be anything other than American, you know, yeah. in case like they had to answer those questions. So, kind of. You know, looking back on it, mm-hmm. it was difficult, like identity-wise, as like a black kid, you mm-hmm. know. And you're not, you're not sure. Like you have like these deep African roots, and you know, I was basically born, raised like Nigerian, but like in America, mm-hmm. you know. So it was, it was just weird yeah, that I'm still dealing understand. with today, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I don't speak, I, all I speak is English, and I barely speak that well, you know? <laughs> uh, how about you? Do you speak? Uh, I speak. It, what's the language in Sierra Leone? Is there in one language? Or is there in Sierra one? Leone, there's multiple tribes, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure um, it's like kind of like Nigerian, right? Yeah. Are yeah. you Nigerian too? Nigerian, no. Yeah. <laughs> But I low key think of myself as Nigerian. <laughs> it's close, right? <laughs> like on the map. Yeah. Why do you think yourself as as Nigerian? I don't because I grew up on Nollywood films, right? Uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't know if I should uh, be apologizing to you or like. 
I mean, they used no, to there's, be. There's so, there's so much culture in it. Yeah, yeah there so is. Much. So I feel like I picked up like a lot of things from them, like the, when they yeah. speak English. Like yeah, I kind yeah. of picked up their dialect yeah. of that, and like just the way they act. Like I do sometimes just to be silly. And my sister is like, "You're so Nigerian all the time." <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because it's, it's it's close on the map, right? Like mm-hmm. Sierra Leone and Nigeria. So yeah. it's like. Um, I'm sure, like, even, like, Ghanaians and Nigerians, they have very similar, like, uh, the similarities in the culture, you know? Yeah. So I'm sure, like, Sierra Leone is not that far, so... No, it's not. Uh, I mean, what's all West Africans, they could pretty much relate one yeah, way or another. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Man, so... Uh, how was, like, how was that growing up? Like, so you come back from... Sierra Leone, right? Mm. At what age? Um, I'm not sure the age, but I started pre-K out here. My sister was the only one who started school in Sierra Leone. So when she came back, she was in, um, I think, the second grade already or third or something. Yeah. Um, I have a twin brother, so me and my twin brother. Yeah, fraternal, fraternal twins. Is that the one that you guys look alike or not? Uh, oh, you're gonna look like your, your sibling, mm. but like, no. So you're not. What does fraternal mean? That's that's the real question here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we. He's taller than me. I wish I was as tall as him. Okay. He, um, so this is the one where you guys are just born at the same time, but you're still kind of like different. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, we um, we started pre-K out here, so. Yeah. Um, so I guess pretty much from pre-K to first grade, no, kindergarten to first grade, we had to do um, ESL classes. Oh, okay. I think I think it stands for English it, as a English s- second language. Yeah. 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 So so I had to get rid of my accent or whatever. You had to. How do you get rid of an accent? I mean, not not get rid of my accent, but, but just to, to learn. You had to sharpen up those. Yeah, because yeah. the language I speak. Um, I just speak the trade language, I call it, like pidgin or creole. Wow, you just said pidgin. And I, the only other person I've heard say pidgin is my parents. (laughs) (laughs) Like pidgin English? Yeah, that's what it is, pidgin English. Yeah, so like Um, you kind of mix words here and there. Yeah, so it's broken English. Exactly, exactly. Wow, you are are African. (laughs) I am African. This is crazy. (laughs) Oh, all right. So you had to you had to go to ESL classes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I guess I picked it up pretty fast because I was out of there by the first grade. My okay. brother, he still had to take it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the only other language. I don't remember what your original question was. Uh, I don't remember either. I, <laughs> I'm just I'm so fascinated in like um at like how African you are. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm but, really, really African. Like, yeah. Man. No, it's great. Oh, you said, like, how was it, like... Oh, yeah, coming back and... Yeah, yeah so yeah. for me, I, I was just always so confused as a child and still as an adult, but mostly more as a child. I was uh-huh. always so confused. Cause I'm being, confused about what? Confused about being African, being and being Muslim, yeah, and being just generally black wow. in America. Yeah, yeah, those three things used to confuse me so much because yeah. I didn't, I wasn't sure. Yeah, like yeah. I thought it had to be like one or the other. I didn't know like all that could be like all three. If that makes sense, yeah, that yeah. I no, am totally, all three. Totally, yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, How did you deal with that? Though? Like, what did, did you like looking back? Do you think like? Yeah, I can't believe. Like, I wouldn't. Is there certain things where you're like, I wouldn't do that now with all the knowledge I have? Were you conforming? Were you? Um, um, were you just? I was. I was yourself? trying to conform. Yeah. I was, um, I was trying to still be different. Like I was yeah. just—it was always just like a back and forth battle. All those yeah. things, because my dad, you know, he was like really strict on like. Islam and like trying yeah. to make us like be like really really Muslim yeah yeah so and we like at the time we didn't really like connect with it that much like we yeah. didn't really care 
but he would like definitely have us go to like Sunday school. We had to go to Islamic school on Sundays, yeah. um, learn Arabic and all that stuff, which yeah. never stuck. Um, yeah. <laughs> but we had to like read the Quran, like to learn surahs, like memorize them. Uh-huh. And then like he would have he would have me and my sister wear our hijab. Yeah. Like we would have to wear it to school, but me and my sister we wow. never did. And this is something I never told anybody else. So <laughs> <laughs> So me and my sister, we never wore our hijabs because we were like, I. Do you take them off right when you got to school or something? Exactly. <laughs> we put them in our oh, backpacks. Not, yeah. We would take them yeah, off yeah, yeah. and put them in our backpacks because we didn't know how to feel about it. Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. thought everybody would judge us. You were us. different. Like it. It's like at a, such a visceral uh, level. Like mm-hmm. you. Like your face is covered. Like your whole head is covered. Yeah. So of course people are gonna look at you like, yo, what the fuck is up with, with them? Yeah. So I, we, at the time we just felt very embarrassed. Yeah. And like and as it. and as like a kid, like your main task, like your main task as a kid is to try to fit in. Exactly. At some point, like you're just trying to like get life in a way. Like you're just like trying to build your community. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys would stuff it in your backpack or like yeah, we tell would me the procedure. <laughs> <laughs> like we would like if our dad cuz our dad used to go to work early in the morning. Yeah, did they he drop you guys off? No, he didn't. Did you guys walk to school or something? This was at the point in when we moved again cuz we used, we lived in New Brunswick when we first came back from Africa and then okay. we lived in Trenton. Okay. In Trenton, New Jersey. New Jersey. Um, yeah. So I was in the second grade. My sister was in the fourth already. Yeah. So that's when he started having us wear it out in public. Yeah. And we wouldn't. So we would leave. If he was at home, we would leave the house with it on. Uh-huh. <laughs> and soon, like a, before we got, and actually, as soon as we like turned the corner or something, we would take it off and put it in our bags. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right when you hit the corner. That, yep. that soon, huh? Yeah, like you guys were not fucking with that. No, hijab. I actually okay. So then we moved again. Yeah, a couple of years so you later. Moved a lot as a kid, yeah, so. low key. We moved again to Hamilton, New Jersey, which is not far from Trenton at all. Uh-huh, like uh-huh. twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. So um, and then in the, I was in the fifth grade by then, and yeah. I figured I don't know for some reason I just told myself well. You're in a whole new city now. No one knows you're here. So yeah, just yeah. wear the hijab to school. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, what my thought process was. But I was like, I don't know. I'll just try it. Just and, try the hijab? Yeah, and I did. I wore did, it to school. Would you think it was like more of like a, let me just do, like, please my father? Or did you like want um, to? I think it was a little less of him and more of me. I was like, You just huh. wanted to. Yeah, okay. I just really wanted to put it to the test. Yeah, yeah. For the first day so of school. So what, what is the, I'm like, I'm like I'm not ashamed of being like this illiterate to like the Muslim culture but what is like what is the significance of the hijab um it's about um I'm trying to think the word I have in my head I'm trying to think of it like just keep it modest yeah it's about modesty modesty gotcha yeah so that's what they say but for me I don't really See the point, yeah, <laughs> honestly, yeah. low key. Yeah. I don't see the point, like just being covering your head just to keep modest. Yeah. Just, I mean, for people to see you as modest anyway. Yeah. Um, if anything, it like for me, I'm just a, like with people, like appearances and just people in general, that would like make me more interested. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it, like, I guess what's the, um, the end goal here? Like, it, you know, you, they want the modesty, right? Mm-hmm. But then, does the hijab like make me like okay? I'm good. Like I've seen enough. I'm 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 fine with what I've seen. Or yeah. maybe I'm just like you know a weirdo, and just I'm just like oh okay. So what else is going on underneath the the whole situation? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You're not a guy, so I, I, don't, I wouldn't expect you to, to like. Uh, I mean, I would wonder, like, when I see other g- girls with it, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what they look like. Yeah, like, like, what, like, what, what kind of hair, hair do they color? have? What, is, what, what does your ears look like? Yeah, like, is it, yeah. Like, um, so, what did was it like a, just a shoulder up thing, or did you? 
I, you know what's you know in some cultures like the whole like they the, had like the whole burqa yeah, yeah yeah no for me it was just like the hijab which is really just the scarf that yeah. covers all your hair your yeah. ears and your um, neck yeah um so yeah that's what i wore just that one i yeah. wore that in fifth grade and yeah. i actually wore it that whole fifth grade year did you have it in your uh school photos like this. yes i actually did but i didn't know how to wear it. like i never wore mine right because some of them have like two pieces yeah. and i would i wore them wrong so they look weird in my pictures like i was just always so embarrassed to take pictures with them on because yeah. it didn't look right what color what, what was it um, i wore different colors they come in all sorts of designs oh, you and was colors. over here smashing the kicks <laughs> you was over here killing the game with the with the, with the hijab? Barely. I was such a dork, man. <laughs> like, I honestly, when I was younger, I used to hate showing my shoulders. Really? I hate showing my skin, but that's because I, I thought of myself as a tomboy. Oh, okay. And I didn't really relate to anything feminine for a long time. Really? Yeah. So, well, why were you... Why... Why were you a tomboy? Was it because you I had a brother or like... I mean, yeah, because I had lots of brothers. I mean, I have just as much equal sisters. Wait, how many How many uh, siblings do you have? Okay, I have nine. Your siblings? Nine siblings. Nine. Oh, I thought you said mine. Nine. Nine, nine siblings. Wow, that's a huge family. <clears throat> yeah, but they're like... Five of them are, like, are my half brothers and sisters. Okay, okay. On whose side? Your mom and your My dad. My dad is... (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) He's a popular guy. Popular. (laughs) Uh, Shout out to Papa Asma. Uh, It's uh, funny, because I have his middle name. He gave all his... all Me and my three siblings, uh he gave us his middle name. Yeah. So we're all named Saheed. Is that your middle name? That's my middle name. My Sahid. dad's first name is my middle name. <laughs> is that normal in the culture or no? I don't know. I think He's my just dad like, is just full of himself move. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your brother? What's your brother? Oh, well, you got plenty of brothers, it sounds like. So yeah, I do. Is, are there any juniors in the mix? Where he um, oh, yeah, there is one junior, one okay. of my half-brothers. They're yeah. all, all of my siblings, half-siblings. Oh, except for the youngest one. She's like... I have never met her, honestly. Really? Yeah. Where are they? Are they... Um, my older s- have siblings are all... One is in Texas. And that's where my twin brother lives. He lives with him. He's with him, too. Yeah. Um, and I have more... S- one in New Jersey still, and the two are in Maryland and Virginia, I believe. Yeah. So, so we're, like, all scattered place. now, yeah. But you know what they look like? like you, yeah, you we all like, used to live together. We grew up together. Wow. Woo. You have such an interesting childhood. Honestly. <laughs> like nine siblings. Mm-hmm. But I grew up with eight of them. The ninth one was born like three years ago. I never met her. Wow. Yeah. So were you guys, like, can you even get close? Are you, are, is there one sibling or a couple siblings that you're like really close to? Um, we were close to one of my, very close to one of my older siblings. Cause, okay. Yeah, she pretty much, because my parents divorced. Okay. Um, what age were you? At what age? Um, Do you remember? I think they officially divorced when I was in the, around the second and third grade. Okay. That's when. But I really don't remember seeing them together, really? together much, no. So the, it, it was, was just, just like a rough like, marriage, yeah. Yeah, it was just like... All you remember is the separation. Yeah, that's what that's what I remember mostly. Do you? I didn't even know they were separating because, like I said, I didn't see them much together. So yeah. for them separating, it was, I didn't really realize. I was just like, okay. Yeah. So so like when you go to school and you have like friends and stuff, did you think it was weird? Like their parents were together and stuff? Or you... Yeah, I did. That, like that was that was something else I struggled with. Like seemingly normal families you yeah, know yeah yeah that's because first of all you have uh an entire basketball team for your family <laughs> and then like your parents aren't together most of the time so like mm-hmm. like the conventional family that's you know in america i guess yeah. like what's taught like what's portrayed in america yeah isn't isn't what you're seeing at home yeah so, 
And so was, you're really con yeah, so it makes sense that you're confused. Uh, uh -huh. You were confused a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I would like do little things to try to make myself feel normal. Yeah. Cause like on TV, I used to see like you know normal sized families. Like for, I said, normal sized families. <laughs> but you know, like I would see like just two or three kids in a family, yeah, yeah, and yeah. one parent, one yeah. one dad, one mom, <clears throat> and maybe like a pet. So I thought that yeah. was normal. Oh yeah. The so pets. I would try to do little yeah. stuff to make myself feel normal, like. Yeah. I don't know, like in TV commercials, they would always have like kids eat cereal before going to sleep or yeah. like in TV shows. So I used to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I thought like it would make me normal. Normal. Yeah. So I used to like, I would try to go home at a decent, I mean, go to sleep at a decent time by yeah. like nine. nine. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, You wouldn't do that yourself? You, like, you yeah, just be myself. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to make a bowl full so cornflakes and yeah, I'll yeah. go to sleep by nine. Man. I don't know. I thought that would make me normal. Yeah. And did it? No. <laughs> I mean, because when I grew up, I figured, I realized, like, it's fine. Like, there's no such thing really as normal. Like, yeah. that's just what they portrayed on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I think it's kind of different what normal is, you know? Yeah, I think, like, the normal now is, like, the nuances. The normal is the real. Yeah, it's like, um, um, I, I don't watch too much TV, but... I guess, like, uh, what's that show, Modern Family or something, where it's just, mm -hmm. like... There is no normalcy in yeah. that, in that you know. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because it's like, at what point did you accept that? You know, where you're just not like, um, the conventional American. I think uh, life. sometime in high school. Really. Yeah, because in high school, I have a little bit more of an understanding of life, just a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was still very confused. Yeah, yeah. But you have some more information in your in your in your grasp at that point. Yeah, but I was starting to become, I was starting to embody more of my identity. Yeah. Um. So like, but like when high school, like I grew up in New Jersey, right? Yeah. I don't know, like, and the people there, they're like. There was just like multicultural people, mm -hmm. like you know, a lot of ethnic people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Middle Easterns, yeah. Caribbeans, all that, okay. Africans. Yeah. So that's what I grew up in with in high school. Yeah. Well, basically throughout my whole school time in New Jersey, uh -huh. but in high school I started noticing it more. Yeah, you started. Yeah, and then we started. I started appreciating it more, like, and I started like also like appreciating other cultures. Uh -huh. Um. So, and I noticed like uh, these other people, they also have like big families and they're not normal yeah. as well. So I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay, so we're not there's the only ones like, like this. There's someone out there like me. Like there's some similarities at least. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you could probably only get stuff like that through cultural families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than what they would like portray on TV, they yeah. wouldn't be that diverse. You know, you wouldn't get that as yeah. much. So, but seeing that like in real time in real life like yeah, yeah. these kind of families that are like similar to your own like you're not the only one coming to lunch with ethnic food <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, <laughs> i mean i never brought food to school though. but actually low-key like my friends and i we would like exchange food like yeah. Haitian food african food like we were love that you, were you the cafeteria chick like were you buying food every day or something <sighs> i'm I barely, yeah, actually I did get food, lunch food at yeah, school. Yeah. It, it sucked though. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I definitely was that kid that had like jollof rice for lunch. <laughs> you really like, brought jollof rice? But it, like, be, like, like similar to your situation, I was trying to normalize it and uh -huh. I was like, fuck, these people aren't going to know what this shit is. Um... <laughs> So I was like, yeah, it's just really spicy Mexican rice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Living in California, you know, I mean, like so key. <laughs> And um, so like when people would ask, it, and it, it, like I was, just, it was like there was a, I was almost ashamed of it. Like I was mm -hmm. like, oh fuck, man, how am I gonna yeah, swing this? Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. So I wouldn't even eat lunch at the lunchtime. <laughs> uh, like I would like wait till after school to actually bust open my jollof rice and whatever the side was for mm -hmm. that day that my mom packed and my thermal like just even having a lunch pail was just stressful <laughs> <laughs> because 
it was uh it was just so different you know yeah so and then you get to high school right and mm-hmm. then like you did you go to a bigger high school or like it was kind of it's not as big as the ones out here in california okay. the ones out here it's so like yeah it'd be colleges it's sometime. probably like yeah. yeah it's probably like probably less than half of that what they have out here in yeah, cali yeah, yeah so um it was a decent size um but yeah everybody was pretty much ethnic there we have some white kids i yeah. mean white families white kids whatever <laughs> but they were like they were they were also kind of embracing too yeah because it's around them they practically yeah, they, have no that's choice for them because yeah. i bet they're doing i mean yeah they have a lot of interracial relationships there oh, yeah, 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 yeah so yeah that happened in my high school a lot but it was cool like nobody really made a big deal about it it was chill yeah it was yeah. whatever um so like go on like so what I think so like when you start after high school you started modeling right mm-hmm. um so the thing with modeling to me is just like like the basis of it is it's almost like god given like you don't like wake up or you, you're not born like and you're you're just like i want to be a model it's almost like modeling is something that like starts from someone telling you that right is is that what happened with you like how did you start how did you get to the point where you're like i want to start modeling um okay that's all for me i feel like all of my current present has just has so much to do with my childhood yeah yeah so as a child like i said i was pretty much a loner and i also wasn't like that engaged with my you know being black being african being yeah. muslim so i would always imagine myself having a different life yeah so that's where i started daydreaming a lot uh-huh. like this daydreaming that I was a whole nother person in a whole nother life yeah yeah but I could also so one of those daydreams were me as a model. <laughs> really? Yeah. So nobody even told you. No, nobody was like, "Oh, you should model." Or something. I mean, people would tell me, "Oh, you're so skinny. You could probably be a model, but uh, you'd have to be tall." Uh, so they would always say, "But you'd have to be tall." So that was the thing. I was always so there was like the little little hurdle. That yeah, you were of. I would have to be tall. Yeah. So, so one of those, one of those. Uh, alternative lives that you were dreaming of was was modeling at, at that point. Yeah, I mean, I used to just imagine a lot of things, but they would feel so like so real, though. Yeah, yeah, um, like you were actually living that. Yeah, a lot of times would, they would just feel so real, like I, because I'm all, because I like art too, so I also yeah. imagine myself as an artist. I imagine myself as yeah. an actress as well. Yeah, yeah. But mostly, I felt connect at the time connected to modeling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so fast forward to high school. Uh-huh. Um, I I felt very estranged when I came out here. Um, really? Why? Yeah. Why is that? Because everything that I knew was gone. Was you gone. know, everyone that I knew You're and like everything that I was water. used to was yeah. yeah. So it just felt unusual being out here, especially living out in Downey, where it's mostly. A Hispanic filled yeah. live Hispanic place. Yeah, I guess. yeah. So were you like the token? The token black, black person. Yeah. I guess black time? girl sometimes. Yeah. I mean barely because I like I was very like a withdrawn. I didn't really like mess talk to anyone yeah, besides yeah. Um, Yannick. Yannick. <laughs> she shout saved out to me. both of them. She saved me. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to both Yannicks. Yeah. <laughs> um, um so then a year a year two at two about two years after high school i just started like really searching online like how to get into modeling like yeah how to uh, whatever get into the industry yeah. um and then i found this page thing called model mayhem uh-huh. where oh, all yeah. yeah where all photographers models and all like yeah, connect and they like collab. build or whatever yeah so that's where i started on yeah. um and it just snowballed from there. Like that's yeah. how I got into it. Yeah. For, first, it all just started off in my head, really. Yeah. But I feel like for me, 
a lot of things that start off in my head, I'm able mm -hmm. to manifest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to bring it to yours. life. And sometimes yeah. I bring it to life exactly like the way I imagine nah, the dream. That's that's such a good feeling, right? Like yeah. Or it's kind of like surreal, like, wow, how much power do I really have here? You yeah, because also I'm I'm also a cancer baby. OK, so this my birthday is on Wednesday, on Thursday, the 12th. Really? Yeah, that's my mom's birthday. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Shout out, happy birthday, both of you. Early birthday. Thank both you. Yeah. OK, so I feel like cancers, uh, they're they're they can wow it makes so much sense <laughs> <laughs> cancers they say they're known to have like psychic abilities okay some yeah. psychic abilities yeah, yeah so i feel like that relates to, to a lot that, of my what i can dream. yeah a little bit yeah because sometimes i really do dream of something and then it comes to life oh no you're talking to the right person because i really think there's so much depth in dreams that they're telling us something you yeah. know what I'm saying like there's, yeah. there's a lesson there's something it's just so strange having dreams because like even like if you don't believe in that like or you think it's nothing like even like uh, scientists don't know what the purpose of dreams are yeah but there I mean to me there is there, there's so much purpose to them because it's like our subconscious mm -hmm. and whatever else is out there kind of coming together to tell us something in our waking life for our waking life you know yeah so I, i'm totally with you on that it's like yeah th those those visions that you were having definitely i'm like it, it just feels good that you were taking them to heart you know what I'm yeah like um do you have do you have any now that you're like working through i mean that's that's a little personal i don't I, mean, I don't want to you don't have to answer that i mean i will answer <laughs> yeah. it yeah okay um there's like two yeah but one i'm not gonna say because okay. i respect it the other one okay i met this designer in uh -huh. downtown la he's a pattern maker okay um he does design development for different brands or whatever yeah um when I first met him a couple months ago, he was like in a smaller office uh -huh. and I would go there and I would hang out. Yeah. And then just this one day I was hanging out, it was like, it was like the evening, it was like getting dark out, it was already gray in his office, like uh -huh. the color. Uh -huh. And then I looked to one corner of his room and I just had that, this weird feeling, like this flashback kind of. Yeah. And I, and I remember that I seen that corner somewhere, wow. but in my dreams. Yeah, yeah. And it was the dreams that I had of couple months before that yeah yeah and i'm like wow like i am supposed to be here right yeah now. it's like a full i call them full circle moments yeah and then i had another one like that when i was like i went to pasadena city college um okay. i joined yeah, yeah i joined the theater program uh -huh. um i was in this i was doing this play and then this one moment we were in the changing room yeah and then i had another like I had another moment like that where yeah. I remembered I, I was in this room with the people. Yeah. For me, my dreams, they never show the people's faces, but they yeah. just, the energy is the, the energy, same yeah. and everything yeah. is the same. You kinda, you're familiar with it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, and I tell everybody in the room, like I told everybody in the room about my dream. They're like, wow, so this is how you know you're supposed to be. You're always like in the right way, right yeah. path of life. Yeah, yeah. So like how you say I'm always calm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that plays into that. Cause yeah. I do have, yeah plans for my future and everything that I dream I feel comes true and yeah. I feel like I'm gonna get everything that I want out of life uh -huh. so in the end I just need to keep calm and just keep on going you know what yeah, I mean yeah yeah like it's all not that it's a set path but you know yeah. the path that you're on is the ideal one that you, you yeah want to manifest exactly no that's really cool so so like that's how modeling can be your your you sound like you mm -hmm. act yeah too. and even your you know your 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 clothing line yeah uh came to be in a, in a way yeah that's that's pretty cool so why did you oh as you said so personally like a lot of things are going on in your life that you disabled 
Uh, I deactivated my yeah. clothing brand. I yeah. took down the website and deactivated the Instagram temporarily. Temporarily. Yeah, because... Okay. That's uh, good, dude. Because yeah. I'm looking forward to more stuff. <laughs> you yeah. caught one of the sweatshirts, huh? I did. I did. Ah, dope. Yeah, I really Shout like the design. Shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> I really like... The, and you designed that yourself, right? Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. That one... That I made that in 2016. Like I said, a lot of at that time, I felt like people were communicating with me, like my friendships and everything yeah. around me. It was just going downhill. Like yeah. it went downhill rapidly, and I just felt like, and I realized all it was all because of lack of communication. Yeah. So that was the time I made that. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, it's a girl and a man, uh -huh. or whatever you want to take it as. Yeah, yeah. They're like really close to each other. Their faces are yeah. intertwined. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And their mouths are open because they're talking. Okay. That's what you wanted. That's what I had in mind, and that's yeah. what I made. <laughs> yeah. No, I was, I was, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So how about the other other uh, uh, articles? Well, the other pieces, the other everything pieces, is yeah. just... Every, whatever pops up in my head, that's what yeah. I make. And I try to... I, I make it, I don't know, I just stare at it, like, I don't know, like, like, okay, so like, if I see a garment that I really like yeah. in the store, I just think of a different way to make it, like, more better. Yeah, I hear you. Or, no. like, how to make it more abstract, actually. That's yeah. how I think of my clothes, as abstract yeah. a bit. They're simplified, but abstract. Yeah. yeah you just make them, you put your fingerprint on it. Yeah, you I make, make it, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to, like, minimize it, because I think you're, you, you know, what you're doing is is pretty, it's pretty unique, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's, um, like, like, I just keep thinking about the, the, the color of that, that, I don't know if it's a skirt or a dress, uh, it's kind of like a, like an aqua bluish. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a skirt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I don't know that that color is just like it's like it like permeates my head. like it's like in my head all the time. like the whole time as we're talking. Mm -hmm. And that and to me that means a lot because it's just like I don't know. I'm just in the colors, I guess. I don't know today or something. <laughs> but like that color is just like resonates with me so much. Yeah. 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 A lot of people are taken by that color. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I was nervous about it. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I didn't think it would be like a wearable color, huh. which I don't think it really is in that type of skirt. Uh huh. It just depends on the right person. Yeah. To wear it, you know. Yeah. Who do you imagine wearing your your, your stuff? Do you imagine? Anyone? I imagine people like me, honestly, really? <laughs> wearing it. Like people who are just like, take who are daring with their fashion and yeah. like. And are open-minded yeah. to new ideas, really. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's, there's probably not a lot of those. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I yeah. feel like those, those people are out there. I just have to Absolutely. reach out to them. Absolutely. Which I haven't really done yet. <laughs> like, my marketing I, sucks right now. Like, I don't really <laughs> reach out. But that's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to, like, that's why... I, this is like the second time I'm taking a break from my clothing brand. You gotta re strategize yeah. and see what's going on. Exactly. No, I feel you. I think with anything that you put out into the world, it's like, uh, it's tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially when it's that near and dear to you. I mean, mm -hmm. like, it's your baby that hasn't uh, got the muscles yet to start walking yet. Yeah. You know? So it's like, um, just you know finding a home for it is is all always like takes a lot of brain juice you know what i mean yeah um but no nah, I, I think i think it'll find a home like oh yeah every, there, there's something out there for everyone and i think that's mm -hmm. you know the beautiful thing about it you know what i mean it's like so like when someone does pick it up, like you know when someone does buy your stuff, it means that much more because it's like whoa, you know, you, yeah, you like that, yeah, you know. So I'm just learning. Like last year, I was just like, last year was a tough time for me. Really? Yeah, I was just like. Just personally, or just, yeah, personally, yeah. I just thought 
I was overthinking a lot of things. I was like stressing myself out about things. Really? I probably I cannot didn't have imagine to. this version of Asa. <laughs> I'm really baffled. Like, oh, I think only your siblings probably see it, or you know, your close friends. I mean, even my family, they yeah. they usually don't see it that much. Really? They're kind of yeah, yeah. Because I was actually <laughs> my mom was. She was talking to me the other day. She was like, I she does, I never see you like get sentimental or like. Do you not cry in public? I, no, I do not cry in public. Do you, do you not cry, period? <laughs> I do time? cry. I do cry. When was the last time you cried? The last time I cried, honestly, was two weeks ago. Okay. Um, was, yeah. it a, was it a, like, a, like a good cry? Was it like, were there sounds? <laughs> um, I didn't like doing it. It was like a, it was was like like a, a silent, silent cry. Ooh, to yourself? I mean, honestly, okay, so I said I don't cry in public, but this was in public. Really? Yeah, it was in <laughs> It was my cousin's graduation. Oh, so you, you I wasn't felt crying it. because of her graduation or anything. Not right. that I don't care. But it wasn't really 100% about her graduation. What was it? It was this... I'm, like, afraid to ask you what it was. I don't want to get, like... I mean, it was I don't like, want to, like... It, I mean, it's not going to bring up anything again. Because yeah. I worked through it a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's this... I mean, it was about her a little bit. Oh, and so then, you've known her for... Yeah. <clears throat> I've known her since since nine years ago for about nine years uh -huh, now uh -huh. yeah so you kind of seen her grow yeah exactly those, i've seen her grow those, those yeah memories start coming in and play yeah start tugging at the heartstrings <laughs> and yeah. all of a sudden now you got dust in your eye <laughs> <laughs> yeah and everybody was going around the table at dinner giving speeches oh and then so by the got time it up. got to me yeah i was already <laughs> choked up i was like what the hell <laughs> Um, but at that, at that same time, I had also just fractured my fingers. You did? Yeah. What? Like, from doing the splits or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, from something stupid. And I'm not even going to bother <laughs> explaining. Right. I fractured my fingers. Um, so I was just thinking about that. And I was thinking about her. And I was just thinking about my clothing brand. And I was thinking about my life. I was thinking about so much things. And yeah. then when I wanted to give my speech because sometimes I get, get, get flustered when I have to give a speech like yeah. especially an unexpected one speeches are so strange yeah I barely yeah. could get out all I said was <laughs> 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 I've known you since you were like in the fifth grade and I started bawling <laughs> I started right crying, to the like, and I was also crying because <laughs> my other cousin, her her sister, yeah. the one, I was crying because of as a bit. I was Were crying. people crying before you? No. Oh. So I made the table start yeah, crying. Yeah, yeah. You, you were that. You were that <laughs> I person. I was the one who let the fire, the tear, tear works go, you whatever. Broke the, yeah. The, broke I was crying, ice. yeah, because my other cousin was at this table. She was one that I used to hang out a lot hang yeah. out with a lot and yeah. like like she was like part of that whole 2016 thing i was talking about oh, okay. just like the whole lack of communication and we were oh, it's okay. such a long story i don't know if i should bother but I, got time. <laughs> I mean it's but I don't, okay i was just saying like she was just part of like we were just really close like for such for like so like probably like three years we yeah. were just so close like on the f talking to each other on the yeah, phone yeah, all yeah. day, literally, yeah. and then like seeing each other so often. Yeah, and then that. And then it's happened. all yeah. It just. You guys, you guys, would you say you guys grew apart, or just like? Um, I don't think it was so much of. Like there wasn't maybe we, like a change in the personalities at all. It was just a change in. The I just feel amount yeah. Of time I you think guys saw each I mean other. not change in the personalities, but it's like maybe we were just. It just got to a fragile point, I guess. Ooh, yeah, like, yeah. where we were just, like, where we just, like, felt like we weren't, I don't know, because it wasn't communication. She and I, we communicated a lot. But actually, at that point, yeah, it was definitely a lack of communication at that point. Like, yeah. it was just not clear enough, though. Yeah. So, it was just, I don't know how to explain it. It was just strange, and then it was, like, other elements it is, in it, it is, too. It is, it's such a, 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 it's like a mystery how people, like, kind of, like, separate you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like it, there's there's usually like no one reason why it happens yeah, right like it's like a, a cocktail of them yeah but then like you get to that point where and it, it's 
you know, you got to be thankful for like situations like graduations and weddings and even death. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. with that, that it brings us together for those moments again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you can kind of reflect on, you know, the past and like how you're here now and just like how those stories intersect. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, next thing you know, you're the first one crying at the family table. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I, I mean I'm just saying I totally get it you know what yeah I'm saying? Like, yeah um, and you guys had like such like a it sounds like it's such a rich like um, bond bond yeah we did like yeah. it just came out of nowhere us yeah. two so are you, did you guys so a after that happens do you like want to change it or like I mean because we we tried to be close it. again last yeah. year. We yeah. tried. But then it just went bad again. Huh. Like it was like like, it's, like bad not just, as in how like like I just feel like there there's just like still like a misunderstanding there and yeah. like we're just either we're both just not getting it to yeah. each other. Like yeah. we we just don't get it. So yeah. then it just I mean, because it has to do with her other friends, too, oh, that God. she was close with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, it, between all of us, it was just not getting through what our, what we're trying to explain to each other, I yeah. guess. Like, I, th I, I don't know. It's like, just wasn't coming. Yeah, because, I mean, it was like that pretty much, but we would, like, all just, like, come back together. But it just started got, getting to a point where we weren't, like pushing it aside and coming back together yeah you know just, we all just started getting both, stubborn yeah he got both got over yeah it nobody quick. would get over it so yeah. then we all just finally let it go yeah sadly i mean yeah. that's just the like one parties of, the third parties is always kind of like yeah things a little strange unfortunate yeah. but um so that was the last time you cried then huh that was the last time i cried usually if i do cry it's not because of it's because usually i would be listening to a sad song really yeah sometimes i just feel like i just feel like very wound up or something uh -huh. and then and i feel like release. yeah i need to relief there's a song named by um leakly who's that uh, she's a she's a musician what's her what's her name leakly L Y K K. Oh, that's how you say it. Yeah, I used to say like Lee. 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 It's Lee. <laughs> I thought you say like. I was just talking about her the other day because you know the Drake album, right? Uh huh. She was in his one of and his. And it's so far ones. gone. I was like, really, his his Scorpion album. Oh, she's in that one. No, no oh. she's not in. But it just like because that album kind of like took me back to like so far gone in some okay. areas like the first two songs off the side b mm -hmm. i was like oh this is almost like a little bit you know what i'm saying yeah. like the, so her name is leak how you leak, say leak lee leak wow i know i thank used to you. say likely <laughs> why thank you for clearing that up man <laughs> i've been going my whole like since 2008 or so uh-huh going likely lee like what <laughs> How do you how do you know the right way to say it? I think I probably I think I heard someone else say it, or if I saw an interview. <laughs> All right, so do you, do you uh, did you like expose yourself and be like, wow, I didn't know, or did, did you just like quietly know? Yeah, okay. yeah, I just quietly noted it. You're just like, oh, but this okay, one time no. I said Bon Iver, but it's Bonnie Bear, <laughs> and somebody was like, no, it's Bonnie Bear. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so legally she has this. Um, I love all her songs. All yeah. Her album, I forgot. Oh uh, yeah, I like her voice. Yeah. Yeah. I think the album is called Unrequited. Okay. Or I don't know, sounds or something. Yeah, yeah. Um the song on it called Sadness is a Blessing. Oh, I'm already interested off the yeah. the title. So that that one like that sadness. one got you your allergies. Yeah, that one gets me in like my crying mood. Like that whole album does the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so good. Like I feel like she's so underrated. Like what she brings out, like her yeah. her lyrics, her, her sounds. Yeah. Like she's just so melancholic, kind of. Yeah. Except for her latest, except for her latest album. Uh huh. It's a bit more pop. Ooh. It's cool though. Um, when, when when did that come out? That one came out like. I want to say last month, maybe the month before that. Okay, so yeah, like two months ago. Yeah. yeah. Huh. 
So when you when you when you stumble upon her, like when you start um, getting into it in high school, yeah. Because I used to listen to her, Kanye West, and Santi yeah. Gold. Yeah, Santa Dang, whatever. Gold. Yeah, whatever yeah, happened to her? Man. I mean, she's put out like two albums. It's not hidden though, like that. I know, no, but like I didn't really like the last one much. I think yeah. it was called Ninety Nine Cents or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But the one previous, Master of My Make Believe, that one is so good and underrated. Man, that sounds like that's a perfect album title exactly like that's me right now like that's yeah. my life like yeah, master yeah. of my make yeah. like in all the tracks on it the yeah. titles the lyrics it everything it hits home yeah yeah i love it man so you don't sing i mean you do everything except for like sing or what man <laughs> i'm trying to get into singing i just i'm just so bad oh uh, i mean because i took but like when i went to pcc like i was taking like a vocal vocal class yeah so i pretty much so far i've just learned like techniques to improve the voice uh -huh, uh -huh. right now i just need to improve my sound <laughs> but i like really the, do want to sing huh it's like the overall voice you need to yeah improve. <laughs> yeah yeah my singing voice yeah yeah but yeah i do want to sing i do um you said you were li you're listening to future on the way here oh yeah i was listening to the future yeah you got a Beast favorite track too. Yet? um my favorite track is i think it's called cuddle my wrist and oh oh that that's i was i heard that and i was like that's a perfect way uh play on words I know, like he's so good with that. Yeah, yeah, he's really. He's good like, cut my wrist, cut my dick. Cause, <laughs> <laughs> I, Cause at first I, was, before I saw the title, I was like, man, this man really going through cutting his wrist. That's what, that's what I thought he said, but yeah, it was, it's it, cuddle. Yeah, and then I saw the title, I was like, oh. Yeah. So Too I sad. like that one. I like Thirty One Days, uh -huh. and I like Wi Fi Lit. You so when do you listen to Future? When do I listen to Future? Yeah, like, when I need to car, when or? I in the car at home, um, especially when like me and my cousin we used to listen to Future uh, when we would like go out to where we go out to the club like yeah, yeah. and her friends too. to get to get that yeah get to get moved. lit like yeah, yeah. <laughs> we would listen to March Madness like that was March the song Madness right there. Was, what what year did that come out like two years ago right yeah that was the song of the year <laughs> yes know? March Madness yeah so those are the times I listen to Future but like I understand like he's probably going through some things that's what people say according to his lyrics yeah yeah um. But sometimes I do listen to it when I'm just like in a chill mode. Yeah. Because he's saying some real stuff, I guess. Absolutely. I, I, I think even that, as much as people want to like downplay it, even that is like, there's something going on there where it's like, it's still honest to me. You mm -hmm. know? And my thing is like, I can't, I can't, um, I can't like uh, I don't know what the word is. I can't dismiss anything if it's honest. Uh -huh. If the person that's doing it, if it's coming from a, a, a place of honesty, you know, and it's genuine. Yeah. So for me, like, I mean, I'm not. For me, I'm not rushing to listen to Future first thing in the morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I do get it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, 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 I. I Appreciate and respect the art, of right? It, you know what I mean? Right. So, uh, what's your favorite album of all time? <sighs> um, favorite album of all time? Yeah. Sheesh. You, if you can only pick one, I'm pretty sure you have like multiple. I do. But if, have what multiple. is one album if you played right now? It's an instant mood changer. Like. Um. That you can listen to five times in a row and still be all right. Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. So hard because there's like I probably have like three that I like. Okay. What are the three? Let's let's play <clears throat> process of elimination. Um. First one I'll say Florence Will Welch, um, ceremonials. Okay. Um, Florence and the Machine. Uh -huh. Um second one I almost want to name a Rihanna album almost. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't mostly like not that 
I love her music, but yeah. I'm mostly a fan of her. Yeah, as a, as a just the, figure. Yeah, as a whole, as a whole, the everything. Whole, yeah. yeah. Now Rihanna but is. God bless her. I don't think I could play any of her albums on repeat like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Leakly, I would say, I, Wounded Rhymes. I think that's the name or something yeah, yeah. Of, the, of that album. Uh -huh. um, what what around what time did these albums come out? Oh, those came out around the same time. Those two. Yeah. Because that was when I just moved here, like around 2011. Yeah. Isn't 2012. that funny? Like like your favorite albums. Yeah, they got me kinda, through a lot. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, yeah. especially that Florence Florence and the Machine. That's when yeah, I just yeah. discovered her. Yeah. Like her first album, Lungs and yeah. Ceremonials. Yeah. Oof. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you. I think. Here's my theory. I think people's favorite albums are tied into where they learn about themselves the most. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, like, when did you when did you come out here? Like, 2011. 11, and that was after high school, or be that was I moved out here summer of 2010. Okay. So um, I went through high school to 2002. I graduated to class of 11. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. it was you were in high school then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I didn't really like discover those kind of artists when I was like in New Jersey. It was like when I came out here. That's when it, it started. Yeah. Yeah. But I always liked those kind of sounds. Like it all started yeah. from like Leakly because yeah. I started listening to Leakly probably like in the ninth grade. When did you start? Tenth. Oh, ninth and ninth and tenth. Probably tenth. Tenth sounds right. Yeah. Because that was like the whole Kanye West era yeah, with the yeah, whole yeah. and Santa goes. Santa goes. She was like did a track with him. And yeah. Then, yeah. 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 That was like what was that like graduation era? Yeah. Um. When did you start like deciding your own? Especially if you're, especially being African, I think <laughs> a lot of like your music was already like decided for you as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, what were you actually? Um, like I had, like I said, I have a lot of brothers. Uh -huh. So, but actually, my two older brothers, they're just um, they were really into rap. Okay. So a lot of hip hop and rap. Yeah. And my older sisters, they they were into R and B. Yeah. But so me, and my siblings, we grew up around rap and yeah. R and B, especially rap. Like Dipset, the oh. Diplomats. I love them. Oh, yeah. Um, especially you know being on the East Coast. Yeah, definitely. So huge. a lot they of East Coast huge. rap. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we. I don't even think the West Coast gave them their just due. Like we, we saw, we saw what was going on, and we, I think we, were fans of it, but we never lived it like the East Coast did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So you, <laughs> you, you know, you, you was big on Dip, Dipset and yeah, Dipset, all of that. All those popular artist type artists at that time. That's what I listened to, but I also listened to African music because my family yeah. we do both. Yeah, yeah. Except my dad. My dad didn't want us listening to music except for, at all. Except, really? Yeah. Yeah. My parents are very strict on music too. My dad, he didn't want us listening to like rap or whatever. Really? No, like no music, oh, no man. dancing. No dancing. Huh? Man, <laughs> like. Yeah, I, I tell you, like, I mean, did you want to dance? Like, that, yeah, I wanted you like to dancing? dance. I like I dance a lot now, like yeah. so much, especially the African you were suppressed music. Suppressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, we would do all those stuff when he wasn't around and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. you were killing it in yeah. the bathroom. <laughs> I was doing the <laughs> crib walk and all that, whatever. Yeah, the crib walk was like. It, like it wasn't even crip anymore at, no. at that point. Like it was just a dance that you did. Yeah. Um, what? But, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say Af how African music is like pretty much bigger in my life right now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's <laughs> funny how it, it it how it becomes that right like mm -hmm. like for me 
there's a lot of African music going on, especially in my mom's car. She would listen to praise and worship stuff all the time. It used to bug me. I'd be like, Mom, like, just can we listen to like 92.3 the beat? And like, <laughs> just like, can we get some hip hop or something going on? But now, like, I think I listen mostly to, to like African music. Really? Yeah. What do you listen to? A lot of '70s stuff, a lot of Afro. You beat. said Senegalese. No '70s. Oh, like a like lot of Af- or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like Kuti. a lot of Afro beat. I was, I was listening to this guy named Rob on the way here, um, who was around that area too. I think, uh, like fella, he, I think he had a night, like a, like a nightclub. At some point, and he used to go like he used to be an act there, but I was I'm just, like I just found out about him like this week, mm-hmm. and I'm like just blown away at, like how advanced his like his, his sonically he was like it, it was just crazy. But I just like the rhythms, you know. Like mm-hmm. uh, I'm a producer too, so it's like I, I appreciate like those unconventional rhythms that, yeah. that that are in them, you know? So, and they're they're very bass heavy. Like they were very of the time of that of the seventies mm-hmm. with the bass and like all the instruments were very influenced by American culture. But it was for them though. Like it was just a different way of hearing it. It's so yeah. crazy. So but yeah, I mean I I don't think I listen to as much modern African, African yeah like as I should yeah. I still like it <laughs> yeah like, I like it for a good party like even though me personally I don't I I become handicapped when it's time to dance in front of people <laughs> like I just don't that used to be me like I used to be so shy to dance in front of people yeah. but now I don't care yeah um one second I need to uh, check how much space we have left on this okay camera. Right, where we where we leave off? What are we talking about? Um, we're talking about. I think we're talking about music. Uh huh. Um, what was the first CD you bought? The like with your own money? With what? I don't. Well, but I don't know. I didn't. I I have never bought a CD with my own money. <laughs> What? No, like. Have you been stealing them? Or what? No, like. Burning them? By the time CDs were like. I don't know, by the time I could, like, CDs weren't really a thing anymore. <laughs> were you on LimeWire? Yeah, I was on LimeWire. Wait, the first CD that my older sister bought for me, I guess I could say. Okay, there's two. Okay. I guess that would have made most of them first, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, you had two first. Yeah. So, JoJo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And, um, Rupee. Who's that? You know the guy who sang the song Tempted to Touch? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so those yeah, were yeah. both my first two albums. Really? Yeah. You still got them? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, when did you start, like, Picking out, I think did, did I ask this you this before? When did you start picking out what you wanted to listen to, rather than like what um, you were forced to listen to? I think ninth grade. Ninth grade. And you just, you yeah. sound like you gravitated towards like um, like the alternative R and B. Yeah, Situation. honestly, I like all music. People, yeah. yeah, I like all music, even like some country music. Yeah, why is country the old, always the thing where it's like universally known to not be liked? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know why, but country music is good. Like, yeah, yeah. I I don't I don't listen to country music, mm-hmm. but I respect it. Still, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I, I like the storytelling yeah. involved. I think I, I look, I'm already like marred that I, like I always associated to like slavery for some reason, <laughs> just because you know the the demographic 
Yeah, I think maybe that's why people don't like yeah. country music. <laughs> But uh, no, I think they. I think they get a, it gets a bad rap. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I don't think it's bad. Yeah. Um, what kind of who do you like country uh, wise? The most iconic, I guess, Shania Twain. Shania Twain. That's because my mom used to have her album. She listened to her in the car all the time. Really? Yeah. That was what your mom was bumping? When my you... mom listened to Shania Twain and Jenna Jackson. Ooh. And she listened to Jenna Jackson a lot because she used to get complimented a lot that she looked like her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which my mom low-key she does? does. Yeah. Okay. Um... I'm trying to think of the most appropriate thing. You know, Janet Jackson's not ugly. No, neither is my mom, <laughs> yeah, and that's neither what I'm am I. I'm just like, like in my head, I'm like, all right, how do I not disrespect your mom the, and say she's attractive bones. at the same time? Yeah. Oh, you got you got prominent cheekbones too. Though. Yeah, that's where. Is that where my, you get her from? Yeah, my mom. That's cool, man. So you guys, so. She has Janet Jackson's cheekbones. Yeah. You remember, did you ever watch Janet Jackson in concert as a kid? Not much. Really? No. I only said that because I remember the first time I seen Janet Jackson in concert on TV. It was uh-huh. like an HBO situation or something. I was too young to be watching it. I was watching my dad. My dad has a crush on Janet Jackson. <laughs> uh, I was just known. I don't think it's like talked about, but it's just like, all right, we know why you're a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my mom, I think you know, my mom knows it too. Um, but I remember I was watching like a performance with my dad, and she got someone. I don't know if it, it's probably staged, but she had this portion in her in her set where she brings a. Uh, someone from the crowd up on stage mm-hmm. and she like um, gives them a lap dance oh okay I think I've seen a few of those yeah and so like I remember the first time I seen that and I was like this is nuts man <laughs> like how does like I, 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 she was like one of my one of the earliest like like sex icons mm-hmm. like for me like I was like whoa women can get like that you know what I'm saying like it was like yo women can do this to me <laughs> um, so kudos to Janet Jackson for opening those doors for me um, so Shania Twain and Janet Jackson then huh yeah she didn't listen to uh, a lot of African stuff? She did, but oh, okay. like those were just those were the mix. Yeah, 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 those were her go-to CDs. <laughs> mm. So you said you, you listen to more African music now? Yeah, now I do. Because I just have like a grown to have an overall appreciation for my culture after just pushing it away for so for long. For so long, man. And now I'm just like, wow, we're like truly amazing, yeah. really. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like everything from like, you know, we, we were just talking about off camera, like, mm-hmm. you know, the 70s Afro beats and now to what it is Table modern. Is now, yeah. It's different, but it's still the same. Like, yeah. it's just more, I guess, I don't want to say youthful, well, I yeah. guess it is youthful. Yeah, it's usually it's youthful. Uh, young people yeah. that are doing it. Yeah. And it's like, it's just been updated. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. for the time. You know, and it's sounds. like more popular. Yeah. Like, it's like all yeah. over the world now. I, and it seems like it's just now getting popular in America. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, because a couple years ago, like two years back, I was in London and... It's not, it wasn't even like a craze there. It was just like a staple. Like Afrobeat was a staple thing. Mm -hmm. Like it was just that prominent there. Yeah. Where here, it's just probably at the, you know, like at the, like the black functions. Like you, you, it has to be like an everyday people. There's a segment for Afrobeat. It's not like the whole thing is Afrobeat. Yeah. It's just a segment. You know what I'm saying? But you go to anywhere else in the world, it's like, 
you can go a whole night with yeah. you know just just all that. Yeah. So I think in America here, it's it's been slow. Slowly, but getting it's there. getting there. Like, yeah, and I, I appreciate it too. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I'm just like noticing like more people, like more Africans, like the, the youth, like yeah. they're really trying to create opportunities for themselves and others, and like yeah. just creating more, not just black atmospheres, but specifically African and African the way like we want to see ourselves right. portrayed, yeah, yeah, and how we really are, not like this whole Wakanda stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to bring that up. I don't even <laughs> want to talk about Wakanda. Really? Yes. What's your beef with? Uh, are you don't want to talk about it? I think it's so. I mean, I just hate like the whole exaggerated part mm. of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I understand just to make it like a TV thing, just to yeah, make yeah. some sales or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like people really think that way. Like and it's I don't know if like people are dumb, well people are. <laughs> uh -huh. But I don't know, it's just like stupid cuz people really try to is, you think it's embellished. Like they just like you just said like they exaggerate it too much than what it actually is yeah or? i mean sometimes it's not even well that that's not even what it is you know yeah, like yeah. it's either wrong information or it's completely exaggerated yeah yeah so i just think that's annoying but um you I, want you want it you want if you want africa portrayed you want it to be honest like you want it yeah to be i want it to be honest and i want it to be portrayed by actual african yeah yeah um but yeah we're getting there like yeah LA is getting there like I, I, I see it and I notice y'all out there I notice y'all <laughs> y'all trying to do y'all thing and yeah. I am too but yeah yeah so how you feel about like um, like uh, like the relationship with like African Americans then and, and Africans Af like um, I feel like yeah go for like it. with what though like just like um because obviously I think a huge part of like Black Panther was like it was curated mostly I'd say by African Americans not Africans you know what I mean yeah definitely so and it sounds like you know that it was it was incorrect to you not that it was incorrect like because I think they did like their research they did yeah, they did some research. of like when they were like including all the tribes and like yeah, their yeah, yeah. colors, their what they wear and stuff like that. All yeah. that information, I think, for the most part, was was correct. But I don't like like the um, it's just the way everyone perceives it, it. I guess is it is it perceive. kind of like fetishized to you? Like it's yeah, like, a, like it's. But yeah, like that and like the whole Wakanda forever. Like if I'm wearing like a dashiki, I don't yeah, wear dashikis, but yeah, if, yeah. if I'm wearing like some type of African garment or something out in public, yeah. someone would come up to be like Wakanda forever. Like get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's, that's not your shit. You're I mean. just like, like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, like, I mean, that's just like a small part of it. But there's like yeah. other things that people like exaggerate or like mistook. Yeah. And when like, is it, so it, it sounds like you're not like, um, you, you're not pushing African Americans away. You're you're no. it, you're you're more upset about like the Hollywood version of what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. There. And I can understand the Hollywood version. It's Hollywood. There's no yeah. stop in Hollywood, really. Yeah. <laughs> but just to make some sales. But I think it would yeah. be nice to, like... And also, the accents were bad. Like, they could have hired some real <laughs> Africans. Like, I'm sorry. Y'all could have hired some yeah. Africans. Oh, uh, what's his name? Had a good Nigerian accent, though. Uh, the big guy. Um... There was one line where it was like, damn, that was... Oh, I know oh exactly. the bigger other yeah, dude with, yeah. the, that, with the, in the mountains or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, like, his accent. It was very Nigerian. I Honestly, was like, yeah, his accent right, was so Nigerian. I know Nigerian. exactly where you sourced that <laughs> shit from, man. It sounded like someone's uncle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did what he had to do, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that mean, was funny. Yeah. I understand Lupita is African. She did what she had to do. Yeah, and yeah. that other lady, too. Um, the what's she gonna name? Uh, like the uh, the warrior mm -hmm. lady. Yeah. Yeah, but there was some hit and miss on there. Like, 
but it, overall, I think visually it was pleasing, but the storyline was boring. But that's a whole nother story. Yeah, and that's a whole. Nother you sound story. like you wrote an essay on this. <laughs> no, I honestly listen. Every black person that I've come in contact with has wanted to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've been the side. You guys have, discussed it. You yeah, guys I've had like a lot it. of discussions about this yeah. with Africans and also African Americans. Did, did you think there was a unifying, uh, like? feeling to it for African and African Americans though? A unifying feeling? Like yeah, unified like, with us? Yeah, yeah. Like do you think I there there was I think the the storyline kinda hit on that a little bit. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Well yeah, I was just thinking that with um the boy the one the son that was left in America. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, that definitely Yes. <laughs> okay. I think I just think there's like a there there it just touched on yeah, there was something that's not discussed. Yeah. A lot in the African and African American community where there is there are differences, you know, in the way people are raised and mm-hmm. the way they're they're brought up here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and um I don't think I don't think the, the, the movie's intent was to like nip it in the bud you know what i'm saying but yeah. i think i think it, it did a good job on raising this the discussion on it yeah. you know what i mean yeah um but yeah I, I mean like i was telling you earlier like for me i'm just like in a weird very strange place identity wise where I can very well be seen as just like a uh, African American, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like the way I was raised is very African. Like it's there's no denying it. Like there's there's differences, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Um, just like even mingling with my friends growing up, it was just like, yeah, I I can't do that, man, because uh, <laughs> my parents were so strict. <laughs> yeah, I mean? yeah. Uh, I you know grades were important. You know what I'm saying? Like it was. Uh, so it's it's like for me it's just like, and I even had discussions with my my you know my friends that are just African American, just straight up black, and. Um, what's discussed is just like they kind of feel um, like looked down upon in a way you know what I mean African American yeah, yeah from from Africa I've seen a lot of wait you said people from Africa feel looked down upon or African Americans African Americans yeah feel. I've seen like on Twitter people discuss this a lot like yeah, almost yeah. every day they do feel that way yeah yeah and I can understand why. Yeah, yeah. Like there are some Africans, admittedly, that are that do yeah, say do these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And, but I don't know. I've never done done that. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I, yeah. And for I, me, around me, I don't see it. But I'm not denying that it happens. Right. But right. I'm just saying, around me, it doesn't happen. I don't. It's see like it. a very general statement. Yeah. It just. Yeah. You know they. And also for black Americans too, they try to say that it's all Africans. This is really no, not. No, it's not. There's because no I know, all. I know, for me, and even like my, my parents. I mean, I think our parents would be the people that would do that yeah. more than anybody. But I don't even see my parents doing that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I'm just. I don't know who, where they're getting that information yeah. from. You know I mean? I, I, a lot of Afri- like, I feel like a lot of Africans they talk about it, like the difference between Black Americans and African yeah, yeah. Americans. Like, they talk about like the difference, like differences, especially with my parents. Yeah, yeah. They talk about the differences, oh, yeah, yeah. the way they were raised. They're, the way, they're, they're, you know, you but they don't that, really yeah. act on it, like on trying to divide. Yeah, yeah. They at the end of the day. It everyone is black here in America you mm-hmm. know what I mean so it's like it doesn't matter at, at, at some point you know I don't see anyone like acting out on it you know yeah yeah but. I think we're always just the human condition is like uh, we're like inherently we're like trying to figure out what what's like us and what's not mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's just one of those things mm-hmm. you know if everyone's the same color you're going to be looking at someone's eyes instead and trying to just discriminate from that right you know exactly so, um 
But yeah, it, it, I think it's just like an interesting conversation. Even though it's like right now it's two Africans talking, there's no <laughs> black yeah. person to like defend themselves and right. like give us like a, a good run for our money. Uh, yeah, I just don't feel. I don't feel like I look down on them at, at no. all at, at any point. Um, what's uh, what's uh, what's mat- What matters to you nowadays? Like, what's um, um, what do you think about a lot? What I think about a lot. Yeah, like this week. Like, what's been taking like most of your mental space? Um. My future, really. Really? Yeah. Because like I said, I've been going through a lot of changes lately. Uh-huh. Um, so, basically, my big thing this year has just been setting goals and reaching those goals at a certain amount of time. Okay. So, right so, now, I've done so well with that, uh-huh. but some things didn't turn out the way I wanted to in time or at all so far late. Um, so right now I'm just like setting new goals. Yeah, that yeah. I, but I'm also like really learning not to stress about these things though. Like, yeah. So right now I'm just being chill and trying and also like just really trying to add more structure and not structure, but like discipline, disciplining myself because I can be so lazy, I guess. <laughs> I was waiting for the word for you to describe yourself. <laughs> I can be so lazy. <laughs> oh, but man. I mean, it's just not about me being lazy. What do you do? What do, what do we do when we're, we're being lazy, though? Like when we're actively being lazy, right? What my, is happening? My actively laziness is me in bed <laughs> on my phone yeah. or just like staring out and like just dreaming of me doing something yeah yeah and not actually doing not it. actually do oh no procrastination yeah that's yeah. my um you're trying to you're trying to get rid of that yeah that's like that the disease. biggest thing in my life right now that's procrastination there's so much stuff going on though like to be procrastinating you know what i'm saying like there's so many so many distractions to be like yeah um, because I don't know if you're like me, where it, like, say I'm doing something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like writing or something, and um, I come to a part where I gotta think a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let me check Instagram real quick, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me. There's so many things going on that it's like, how can you not procrastinate now? Yeah, um, it's hard. So, is so that's a big. Uh, it's yeah. A little, that's that's a big thing you're trying to you're trying to yeah, get. Yeah, for me, I'm just trying to, because I've also been like, like I've said so many times already. I grew up like kind of like a loner a bit, and always mm. like tr- withdrawn. Like I would be around people, and I would eventually just withdraw from them. Like yeah, yeah, you're real like reserved. Yeah. So now I'm just like. Are you like that now, you think? Huh? Are you still like that, you think? Yeah, I'm still like that, yeah. but to a certain extent. Because I used to be way worse. Like, I would not speak at all to anyone. Yeah. Unless I was, like, around you for a really, really, really long time. Like, we, Why? Why would you do that, though? Because I was just afraid. I used to just be afraid of, like, people hearing my voice. Really? Yeah. So it was fear that that. Crippled yeah, for you, a long though. time it was fear that crippled me. Yeah. Um, and you, like we said before, and then we can you can see how that can like be misconstrued. I mean, like, mm-hmm. yo, this, she thinks she's too good for us and shit. Yeah, I used you to know? get. I would get that so much. Yeah, and it's not even like what what's actually going on. It's, yeah. And I'm my, to me, it's like, why is that always someone's first thought? I think it just reflects on them. Exactly. I think it's them pro- uh, exactly. projecting themselves on their their insecurities mm-hmm. are being projected onto you. Because it's like, why wouldn't you talk to me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, is there something wrong with me? It can't be something wrong with me. There's something wrong with her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. So it was at the end of the day, it was like fear of just. Um, being heard 
fear of saying something dumb, dumb. or uh. not being able to keep up with whatever conversation because like yeah. I don't know kids were like so ahead of their time I yeah. feel when I was growing up like, everybody was just talking about stuff that I couldn't relate to that much uh-huh. I feel and I just didn't think I would be able to keep up or yeah. and I sometimes I couldn't relate to what they were talking about uh-huh. and um, well yeah I mean like your background was mm-hmm. so different yeah yeah so yeah you yeah. just instead of like you just didn't feel like a part of them yeah I just didn't feel a part of anything for a long time mm-hmm. Even when I would be a part of it, I didn't feel a part of it, you know? Yeah. So that's how I've always been, but I've pretty much talked myself out of that, like... Recently or what? No, not recently. Like, this, like me right now, I would not be able to talk to you like this (laughs) if it was, let's say... How long ago? Three years ago, I would not be able to talk to you But how would you, how would you, like... So if I ask you to ask you to do, you'd be like, mm, nah. Yeah, I would be hesitant. I would be reluctant, and yeah. I would be so I don't know, off put and shy, and just yeah, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be able to keep up if this was like three years no. ago. Well, thank God for growth. Exactly, yeah. but now I'm just like trying to, cause like there's some people. There's some people that I feel like intimidate me, mm-hmm. and I'm only comfortable with people who I feel like I would be able to be a match, or I could be like, sorry to say, above them. <laughs> <laughs> so are you above me right now? Is that what's going on? No, no, no. <laughs> like that's not. <laughs> I mean, that sounds bad, but it's, no, I get what you mean. Like you, like you, just people who I just feel like I would not be able to find a connection with and be yeah, able to yeah. go off of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, so if it's hard for me to find a connection with you, like, I would be intimidated and I would, like, withdraw yeah. and not speak to you yeah. much. Yeah, because you, you don't want to give, you don't, because you, you're I, fear I, of being I feel exposed. Like I'm, no, I know, because I feel like I'm going to be, like, I'm going to embarrass myself in front of you yeah, or, like, yeah. something like that. The secret is out. I am yeah. not like you. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to go in this conversation type shit. <laughs> uh but so like what what made you overcome that was there like a something Um, that happened in your life i mean modeling really has helped me so much for me it was just more about it was less about like the money and like trying to make money and trying and just like taking pictures it was yeah it really helped me a lot with my confidence and interaction with people and i'm like because i was just pet my pet talk myself like Yo, Asma, if you want to really be in this industry, you got to come out your shell. You got to yeah. talk to people. So is that, your, is that the tone of your voice when you talk to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I love Asma. hearing the tone of it. I love hearing the tone of, of people's voices when they talk to themselves. <laughs> like, you sound like you're your friend. You're your own friend. I am my friend. That's <laughs> you're the, you're the, you, you have a uh, Yannick in you <laughs> I do have a Yannick in me <laughs> that's why you gravitate to the, the both of yes. the both of the Yannick yes cause you have one in you yeah. so that's cool uh, so yeah so modeling was that yeah was modeling that really me. helped me a lot it's, I think it's so it's so like just going back to like what I was thinking about modeling and not to make it sound like there is no skill in modeling mm-hmm. cause I think that's how it came off earlier I, and that's not my I think that I think it does take skill to model it like they, you, there's a learned set of behavior that you have to to like to learn you mm-hmm. know in, the, in that profession yeah um, but I think like the basis of it is it is is talent you know what I mean like um, and I think the talent um, is very seldom like um, like noticed by the actual person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's usually uh, it's, it's usually like oh you should model. Mm-hmm. You know, and you you're receiving that, and then that generates those ideas for you, and then you're like oh maybe I should try this out. But like for you, I mean, I think it's very different because it sounds like it started from like a vision. You know? Yeah. Um, so I, like I guess like my 
and my question was like just growing up with these people people were saying you were skinny mm -hmm. it sounds like and um did did people like say like you were like pretty and stuff or like no, they would just say because I was skinny. Really? <laughs> yeah, just mostly because so I was skinny. So anybody skinny should should model. Is that what Pretty they say? Pretty much. That's what that's what they would say. Oh, no, okay. Because I feel like I was like an awkward looking duckling when I was younger. I think we all were. Anybody <laughs> in junior high at that time, like it, it's so weird because all the hormones are going on. Like you're like you're going through your growth spurts and yeah. all that. And everybody just looks weird in junior yeah. high. Yeah. Yeah. But like, not, I just like, I'm surprised. Uh, I guess that's what I'm saying. It's just yeah. Like, but I would like try to like make my, because you know, like they have those talent things that they do in malls. Yeah. <laughs> I would have, I would like bother my mom to like take me out to those. And she never took, she's like, those are just ripoffs, they're scams, which they are. <laughs> yeah. So she would never take me out, but I do remember like always bugging my mom to take me to them, even though I wasn't even ready. Like I know that now, I, w yeah. I wouldn't even if she did. Like I wouldn't have yeah. been ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so yeah, so I guess like what what's the skill aspect of modeling? The skill, honest, I think personality. Really, personality, because like if you don't speak on set, I feel people are just. I mean, it's hard for you to build contact through that way, you know, yeah. and want to want people to do like a repeat another job with you yeah, if yeah. you're not like oh, yeah, if yeah. you don't have much personality and yeah. you're not like bringing that personality onto the camera. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, modeling. It's like I feel like everything I thought it was is kind of different. It's especially now these days. It's less about your looks and more about your personality yeah, yeah. and what can you offer to the world. Yeah. Even though you're just taking pictures for vanity, yeah. Um, but what can true, you offer? Very true. Yeah. yeah. So um, for me, I really do want to offer more uh, than my appearance. You yeah, know, yeah. I want to like, like for me, it helped me build my confidence. So I, I would hope that would like help other people. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but like, just not this that, but like what it represents, like being. Um, African and Muslim, mm -hmm. you know, even though I don't really pose in my hijabs or whatever, uh -huh. I don't, I haven't done that yet. But just but like there's those kind of stuff, there. just yeah, like just like their clothing, there's someone out there that that gets it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like if you get it, you get it. Like yeah, you, you don't yeah. need too much explaining. So yeah, um, but yeah, it just helped me with my overall confidence and being mm -hmm. able to like. I think it's like preparing me to get into acting, like just yeah. being comfortable in front yeah, of the yeah. camera, like, yeah, yeah. and just knowing my angles, knowing how I look, knowing how I sound, like that whole overall thing, yeah. that's me. Like yeah. it all just came from modeling. Yeah. I think like it translates to, to, to at least what I see on like Instagram and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like in your, in your shoots, you, there's not, a uh, single notion of like shyness you know what i mean like you're very confident and, yeah and it looks like in, in all of your shoots yeah know? and you, you're like very interesting interesting to look at you know what i mean like there's there's so much um depth there you know where it's just like oh uh, like I said, like like it's just like your your face is pleasant, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you just, it's like a, a quaint smile when you're not even smiling, you know. That's me smizing. Yeah. <laughs> so you so you heard this before? Um. Yeah. Like, to, to the point you're able to like categorize it. For me, actually, a lot of people usually say I don't smile in my pictures, yeah. but I think I am smiling. Yeah. I'm just Do you like, have dimples? It appears that way, but I don't your know. Huh? Like yes, it's my cheekbones. They yeah. they give that trick of illusion, but I don't think I. Maybe it's a different category of dimples. Who yeah. knows? But yeah. Yeah, that's cool. When did you like start accepting yourself? Um. Like you physically and stuff. You know? Physically, that all happened through modeling. Yeah. Cause I was like I said, I never used to wear like things that show my shoulders yeah, and yeah. legs until the eighth grade. 
I wore, I remember I bought this top from Kohl's. <laughs> it was low cut, just like this one right here. Okay. And it was like, it was short sleeves and it yeah. was long. Uh, I wore it to school uh -huh. and everybody was like, wow. Oh. I got so much compliment. And I've yeah. never been complimented in that yeah. way before. Like people were like attracted to me, even yeah. like the boys. Yeah. And, and I was like, like, oh, oh wow. I was cool with it today. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. yeah people so, talking like, yo, you, hey, you seen Oscar today? <laughs> so, yeah. So, from then, that's when I started, like, saying, oh, okay, so I guess I don't look that bad. Yeah, yeah. So, I started, like, showing off a little more skin. It's like wearing short sleeves and low-cut yeah. tops, even though I didn't have boobs. I thought you had to have boobs to wear low-cut tops. Yeah, no. Nah. So, um, and then 10th grade, I was wearing, I started wearing shorts. Okay. Um, you weren't wearing shorts before? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. I wore shorts, but not as often. Um, and then when I started modeling, I started getting more comfortable wearing bikinis, like at the okay. beach and more. I mean, I didn't really even do that to the beach, just only for like photo shoots. And yeah. then I started posing in like lingerie. Like uh -huh. I just started modeling really helped me like love Which, everything yeah. about myself and become you have to it's like yeah do or you have die to. in those situations where it's yeah. like i gotta do it if you're trying to have other people like try yeah. to sell it then yeah, yeah. you gotta be comfortable i mean because the worst thing is like going being in those situations and just being like oh fuck i'm re like yeah. and being like super reserved because i mean that that also translates mm -hmm. into like you know the, the into the camera you yeah know? yeah but like also um I was learning that it's okay to change stuff about yourself that you don't like. Okay. Like what? So for me, it would be my, not, I'm going to say my skin, but my skin was like, used to be like really uneven. Oh, okay. There, <clears throat> but not like not really the uneven. Tone, but like but the, like, uh, like the, um, like the imperfection that you can help. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Just like, like yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like, I started looking into stuff like how to like even out your skin tone and yeah. stuff like that. So it's like doing sugar scrubs, exfoliation. Yeah, yeah. Just like subtle things like that that I could change about myself that made me feel more comfortable. Those yeah. are like things that I do and I that I did. Yeah. So right now I just feel like I'm almost my ultimate self. Yeah. Just um, and like working out gave me like more shape to my body. I'm uh -huh. wearing like baggy pants right now, yeah. but I'm <laughs> I kind of have a big butt, but that comes from my mom. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but like working out it gave me like the muscles, like gave me more tone and shape to my body. Just look, just like the overall fitness and look yeah. of myself. I'm trying to see what else have I altered a bit. Um, Oh, so working out, you're saying working out gave you the donkey. Like, it gave you the um, back. It, it has emphasized it, yes. Yeah, yeah. It has. It gave it a lift or what? It, the lift was there, but it's made it, like, bigger slightly. Because I, cause I, I I'm on, like, a high-calorie diet, uh -huh. so I eat a lot. And, like, it just, like, I work out and my, it just all goes to the right places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that depends on your body type, because that's yeah, I was how about my mom to say, is like, shaped. Does it, does it, like, you know when, like, I remember there was this craze on, like, working out on, like, get your squats right for women, where it was just, like, if you want a big butt, you know, you do this and you work out and you get it there. But it, does it actually, like, do that? You know what I mean? Or is, or it, is some of it more like, it's just, you know, genetics, just natural? You know? it, it, Genetics plays a big part, and that's what a lot of fitness people, I guess, don't emphasize. Yeah. But genetics does play a big part. Because if I was eating as much as I am now, and my mother didn't have, doesn't yes. have like a big butt, but she has like bigger arms or whatever, yeah. then maybe they'd go to my arms more. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like, so does your genetics is a huge part of it. It, yeah. it is, but you can also like. You can also help it. Like, you can grow your butt to a yeah. certain size. Yeah, yeah. You can do all this and whatever, but don't expect to come out like a figure eight or nothing. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, the hour Yeah, guys. like, my mom, she has <laughs> big breasts, but <laughs> I am obviously a she, Listen, man, your mom, it sounds like, she, she looked like Janet Jack. <laughs> you said you out here because you, your mom remarried, or? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just... I mean, I, now we know she's not on, in the market, you know what I mean? Like, but, um, 
Yeah. But yeah, I just, I, I, so, not everyone can have a big butt at the end of the day. Um, I don't, you can't I work don't want to, don't want to say that. But you can't work at getting a big butt and like. You can't expect, yeah, yeah. Cause it might just mostly go to your thighs. Yeah, yeah. And you'll have bigger thighs, more thighs than you have butt. That's how my sister is. She has some very thick thighs and not that she doesn't have a, she doesn't have a big butt, but she but has, a, she just has a run round butt. She runs yeah. track. Yeah, yeah, this is so the, the sister that runs track. So she has thicker thighs. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's a sprinter, so yeah. like that's where all where all the the power comes from. Yeah. I guess, you know. I mean, but it's not even like a big butt isn't everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> but I'm pr- I'm ha- I'm proud of mine. I'm happy I do have um, a little you're, chunk in a trunk. Because yeah. <laughs> you're you know you you, you look. Like a, a smaller girl, you know. Yeah, I mean? I'm petite. Smaller woman. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, very petite. But then, like, there's it's like a little surprise. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, people are always surprised. Yeah. Uh, good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I I, I think we just kind of need to be more accepting to all the, like the nuances and body types I love I just love body types like it's, I mean especially in women obviously you know because that's mm-hmm. what I'm into um, like I don't I mean I there, sure everybody has like their preferences but there's no like um, uh, deal breakers for me at least you know mm-hmm. where it's like I think everything can be appreciated in a sense you know like everybody has something with their body that's like oh that's that's completely you and that's um that's good it's like it's it, it it's attractive in a way you know what I mean? yeah um so so now it's like ninth or tenth grade and like boys are looking at you a little bit, yeah. still not too much. I'm still a bit awkward looking, still skinny. Uh-huh. I don't have the butt yet. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm just like, at that point, I'm not, I still don't think about boys that much. For me, I never really, growing up, I never really, I thought boys were cute, but I never like, I was never boy crazed ever. Really? Yeah, so what I did was never for, as much as boys, it was just for like the general attention, really. Yeah. Were people throwing a lot of attention your way like that? Like I mean, for my, because I started, this is when I started getting into, like, 10th grade was when I really started be getting into my own sense of fashion. Oh, okay. So that used to draw attention. Yeah, it's like, oh, what, man, she, what's Yeah, I used to, like, I had, like, a pixie cut then. That's when I started doing a lot of pixie cuts. Okay. Um, I had, like, a, I remember this one point, I dyed my, had my hair dyed honey blonde, my full head. And Ooh. I would, like, wear it in, like, a mohawk, like, the middle part. Oh, like, wow. I would part the sides down and oh. then wear the middle part up in a mohawk. Oh, it's hard not to look at I mean like walk past that and not exactly. be like whoa did not remember that you know what I mean yeah and then like summer of 10th grade I went that was like my first time visiting Cali really yeah so I think my, yeah so my mom had already remarried by then uh-huh. so I came to Cali oh wait I didn't come to Cali at that time wait did I no yeah yes I did you did I did so I visited Cali for the summer uh-huh. And so I bought some stuff out here, and when I went to New Jersey, like that, that they didn't have in the streets no, in New Jersey. They did not have colored skinny jeans yet in New, on the East Coast. So. Is this a drunk era? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I had, came through with the turquoise yes, jeans. <laughs> I had purple and I had yellow. Okay. Actually. Oh, okay. That, yeah, but the, the sticking to your roots. Exactly. Yeah. The yellow, the yellow ones were really cute though. Yeah. And I, I remember wearing those often, even though they barely fit me anymore. <laughs> like barely fit you how? Are they? Yeah, they were or getting they too like tight? they were too tight. They were getting too tight. So. Uh, well. But like I remember they, they turned like, into to leggings on some, some spandex <laughs> side joints. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but like when I wore them, like everybody was like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, of course you have the haters. <laughs> They're like, what is she wearing? Whoa like, she is funny, cool? man. 
Whoa. Hey, who said that, man? I mean, this, I would be walking down a hallway. I would hear, whoa. Like, and I started wearing, like, leather leggings. Like, I was the first person in my leather school. Leather le- leggings. Yes. Oh, yeah, Honestly, that was that if was anybody that from my thing. old school disagrees with this, y'all are some haters. <laughs> y'all know I started that. <laughs> you started the trend. I wore black leather leggings. And then some, a week later, this girl wore, like, gold yellow, <laughs> gold leather she leggings. She picked those shoes, like, where, where is she getting the leggings? <laughs> yeah, and then somebody I came up those. to me like, yo, you seen that girl? She's wearing leather leggings like you. And I was like, ah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I already did it, so who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's when I started like feeling myself a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, was a, you was a fashion trend. Like people was looking low at key, you. Low-key, yes. And I hope like people who I grew up with, like y'all can admit that. <laughs> Get out your feelings. Admit it. Y'all know I did yeah. that. <laughs> I birthed you niggas, man. <laughs> You say it, man. It's, it's, yes, it's fine. Uh, Talk your shit. All man. you bitches is my son. <laughs> <laughs> would you wear? Would you wear le- leather leggings now? Yeah, I mean it's still a look. It is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It just depends how. How. How you wear it, I guess. That's true. I, I think you know everything comes back back around, just depending on how you. You freak it, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't wear. I don't think I'm. What about the gold ones that you? The gold you, ones, nah. The gold your ones, girl nah. Had. nah. <laughs> <laughs> the black ones, <laughs> yes. The gold ones, no. Alright. Um. So what are you wearing now? Like. And now I'm wearing some pants. Are you into like baggy, like I'm into, free flowing? I'm, I'm into everything, like. Yeah. But lately, I've been into chic sexy subtle mm. and that's really the style of my clothing clothing brand because mm-hmm. that's how it's really just how it just plays into me how i grew up like not yeah. wearing not revealing much skin yeah yeah even though i do but i don't but i really don't wear shorts that much or short skirts like yeah. i'm not naturally drawn to it yeah um but it's not like overt sexiness. It's it, like you said. It's real subtle. It's just like yeah. If you're paying attention, you'll catch it. Yeah, exactly. So right now, though, I'm wearing some pants that I thrifted uh-huh. from the store. Obviously, I like the color of those. Thank those you, pants. thank you, I, Ann Taylor. You, t- you, oh, you said Ann Taylor. Yeah. Okay. I thought um, you said you, you, you and you tailored it. Yeah, like, no, hey. it has to. It got tailored like at the waist. Okay. Because they were bigger. And you're a petite. <laughs> yeah. Situation. And the bodysuit I'm wearing is from the first collection of my brand. Eminent. Yeah. So that's what this. I, I named this one the Charlene bodysuit, which why? was some girl I knew in high school. I don't know why I named it that. Cause Charlene? Who is Charlene? This girl I, I knew in high school. I wasn't even friends with her like that, but I just well, always liked, liked her, her name. name. And I liked the song by Anthony <laughs> Hamilton. I was about to say, did she ever go back home is what I want to know. <laughs> My man was hurting, man. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I just wore this bodysuit. It's like high cut too, so okay. it's pretty out there. Um, I have to redo these pieces though, cause Why? these were these got sold out pretty fast. Um, people like them a lot, yeah, that's, but that's really there, yeah, there's like a lot of reconstruction. Like if I were to do them again, I would like change some things about it, like the fabric, mm-hmm. um, and just like some things on it. But yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. Okay. trying to like see in the the mirror there's a mirror up here for yeah. people that are watching but um what is what's the lady what's the last thing you le- learned about yourself like what's the newest thing you learned about yourself the newest thing um like, what did you just, where you were like, oh, I didn't know that about me. Mm. I oh, I am, <laughs> I don't know, I guess stronger than I thought, I guess. Really? I mean, not, I mean, physically, yes, because when I've been working out, I didn't know that I could pick up for, like, 
Like, I don't know how much weight that is, but when you're plates. doing squats, yeah, the uh, plates and like yeah. you add them on there, like I could actually lift a lot of, not a lot of those, but like think like 40, 50 pounds. You think you can, you can. I could do it without, I could do it like, um, without like, you know, the assistant machine, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Smith machine. Yeah. I could do that. Um, but honestly, it's not the physical part. I don't really pay attention to my, okay. Just scratch that. <laughs> so not my physical strengths, strength, but my your, mental. Your, your, your mental strength. Yeah, like I'm. You didn't know I'm how like, resilient you were. I'm resilient, yes. Um, and just like I can do so much more than I ever thought. It's just like fear has been in a way in my life. It played a huge part of my life for so long. Yeah. And like over over the time, as it's as I slowly been growing out of it, especially like right now. Because this year I made up my mind to test myself and push myself, put myself more out there, especially when it comes to guys, like yeah. dating more and being more physical with guys, I guess. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I've been more, yeah, I've been more out there playing uh -oh. the field. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Are you single right now? Yeah, I'm single, but I'm playing the field. <laughs> Fellas. Hey man, what's what's the app? Let them slide in your DMs. <laughs> Let them know what's up, man. Yeah, I'm single. Um, uh, yeah, just stuff like that. Cause I've just like held back from that for so long. Yeah. But was it? Um, so was it? It sounds like it obviously was out of fear, but there was like a want, like deep down, there was like a, a want to to do that. Yeah, there's always been a want. <laughs> <laughs> there's always been a want. Okay. It was just more of um, not, I guess not necessarily fear of guys, but more of me, like more not just yourself. being, wow. yeah, okay. just not just being 100% in my body. Gotcha. And not just being 100% like, thinking I would be able to handle it ment mentally, I guess. Yeah. But now it's like, actually not a big deal at all. Like it's like yeah. probably the most normal thing. It's just like such a taboo, I guess. It's so it, it basically like, it's not what you're alluding to. You're just like, you embrace your sexuality. Yeah. Like I'm, you just like, this is what I desire here. Yeah. This is what I want yeah. out of this. Are you experimenting? Yes, I'm experimenting. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's a newfound land for you. Like, you're, you're still discovering that. Not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Someone needs to take, not even advantage. That's, that's, a, that's the worst way to put it. But <laughs> someone should, should capitalize on that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I think there's... Um, there's always room for learning that kind of stuff. You know? mm -hmm. Like yeah. you should always learn more about yourself, you know? mm -hmm. even in that aspect. Like, um, like there's just so much to us as people, you know. Yeah. You know, there's 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 so many like nuances and little 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 uh, idiosyncrasies to us that we're you know I don't even think we're aware of sometimes. Unless we explore it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, good for you, man. <laughs> um, what's something the world doesn't know about you but definitely should? Um, I don't know. I think this is the most open I've ever been. So really? I think everything that I wanted the world, that I would want the world to know about me, I've already said, like, especially like how I grew up. Yeah. Like those things like that. I've always been like wanting to have a way to like express that yeah. on a platform, but. How do you I think sleep? this is pretty good. How do I sleep? Yeah, S tummy, flat tummy on your <laughs> back, on your left I side, your right side. I sleep on my back only if I'm, I don't know, sometimes I do sleep on my back, but usually I sleep like this. In the fetal position? If, yes. I, that, 
I, I, I have to sleep in the fetal position too. Man. I think it's that's that's the way I knock out. Like if I'm ready to go to sleep. Yeah, that's how I knock out. But then I also Do, end are up your like knees on my touching stomach. though? Are your knees touching? They're just together like this. But like the inside of your knees, are they like? Oh yeah, yeah, together? they're touching. Oh man, see you're on you're on. A Sometimes I have a pillow when yeah, I when I, I feel restless. Yeah, yeah, I gotta have like the separation between the knees, man. It's 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 important. It's really important. So that's something I think you know the world should know. <laughs> um, how do you feel? I feel pretty damn good. Okay. How do you feel? I feel relieved. I'm not nervous anymore. <laughs> Same. Cool. Uh, should we wrap it up? You have anything else you want to um, talk about? Did we we talked about? We got, well, let me know when the relaunch is. Let you know. Let us oh, know yeah. when the relaunch is um, for Eminent. Hopefully soon. <clears throat> I just have one obstacle to get over and then they will there will be a relaunch but it will be ran differently this time like okay by you still yeah by me but it's just um the way i did things like, okay you learn you learn a little bit yes yeah, it's, it's a learning process because this is not something that i went to school for or anything even though i've always had a passion for it yeah it's just like life a life thing that I'm going through, a life learning lesson, like just trial and error. Yeah. So yeah. Best way to learn. Mm-hmm. Um cool. Are we good? Are we done here? Yeah, thanks for having me. Nah. No, nah, thank you. Nah, thank you for being so like I feel honored when like when you said like you've never been this open. I feel <laughs> I felt I felt that shit. <laughs> I feel honored. So thank you for 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 being here. <laughs> yeah. Cool.